3D printers have the potential to revolutionize manufacturing, but what we see now is just the beginning. Just a few years ago, consumer 3D printers were hacked together with spare parts and they were barely able to finish a print without some kind of issue. But these days, 3D printers are pretty darn reliable, and most printers work great out of the box with very little experience required to operate them. The problem is, 3D printers are slow, so one usually isn't enough. If you have multiple 3D printers and you use them as part of a business, then congratulations, you own a 3D print farm. But a print farm isn't all fun and games. As you add more printers, the complexity of your farm skyrockets. Scheduling prints becomes a nightmare, failed prints cause all kinds of delays, tracking and fulfilling customer orders becomes a real problem, and keeping your farm clean and organized is almost impossible. Needless to say, managing a 3D print farm can be a real headache. The thing is, many of the problems 3D print farms face can be solved entirely using software. I'm Stephen McCulloch, product lead at 3DQ. It's 2023, so today I'll be discussing 23 print farm problems you can solve using software. Okay, so I don't really know what happens when you print PLA at 300 degrees, but it can't be good. You really shouldn't ever be able to accidentally send a high temperature nylon print to a printer set up to print PLA. The traditional way to run a print farm is to micromanage every single printer individually, but that method isn't scalable. But what if you could zoom out and delegate all the micromanagement to a computer? You know how they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result? Yeah, running a 3D print farm definitely feels like that sometimes. Having to start, remove, and track prints is disruptive and time-consuming. Yet we continue to do it over and over, hoping that one day we can finally clear up that backlog and find the time to actually grow our business. If you need this many tabs to control your printers, that's a problem. If you're coding your own software, you're not printing. You might have tried farm software that just didn't work out for you. It can be tempting to do everything yourself and write your own farm software from scratch. The problem is, if you're splitting your time between software development and 3D print farming, you're probably not going to be doing all that much of either. Learning is hard without a community. 3D print farms and 3D printing businesses don't have that many good places to chat with other like-minded people. If you're not in the 3D print farms discord yet, come and say hi. Check out the link in the description for an invite. There's nothing more frustrating than plugging in your Prusa only to find it that your 3D printing software doesn't understand your filament sensor at all. Now you have to choose one or the other. It's not fun. SD cards are just the worst. They're just so small and easy to lose, and keeping track of them when you have 10, 20, or 100 printers is a nightmare. You're basically your printer's secretary. If you're running a business, you need to keep track of incoming orders and what you've printed. Instead of spending time on things that really matter, many print farms end up wasting lots of time on tedious administrative work that really should be automated using software. Everyone's an expert, especially Cool Guy 12 Yeah, he actually solved his nozzle clog last week by leveling his bed. <laughs> Printers in a farm usually all tend to look the same because they usually are the same make and model of printer. Farms, though, still need a way to uniquely identify every single one. Giving your printers a name or a number is fine, but that just means you'll have to manually track everything about them in a spreadsheet. And let's be honest, that's not going to stay up to date for very long. So much work. With most 3D printing software, every time you add a new 3D printer, you have to do a whole bunch of manual setup and configuration. All the printer's information is in the firmware. Why should I have to tell the software what my print volume is? Networking print farms is hard. If it takes hours of coding, dozens of IP addresses, and 10 simultaneous Linux terminals to connect a bunch of Raspberry Pis together, there should be a better way. There's just too much to remember. Does printer 23 have a 0.8mm nozzle? Or was that printer 27? Or did I change it to a 0.2mm nozzle last week for that special print job? There are so many things for 3D print farm operators to keep track of. And while your print farm can scale infinitely, your brain unfortunately can't. Software should manage all of these details behind a layer of abstraction, so you don't need to think about them. Gas is expensive. Many print farms are too big to fit in a basement, but driving across town just to get to your print farm is a big waste of time and money. Teleportation doesn't really exist yet, but remote access is the next best thing. 
it should be easier to pump up your printers per pi ratio. Pies are hard to come across these days, so we need a way to do more with what we've already got. There's still no easy way to connect a whole bunch of 3D printers to a single Raspberry Pi. Running a print farm is like babysitting hamsters on a sugar high. There's so much going on in a print farm that it's pretty much impossible to collect accurate data. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't know about you, but when I'm juggling dozens of 3D printers, it's pretty easy to accidentally hit the wrong print and send a huge, massive print that's supposed to be on a CR10 to a Prusa Mini. That tends to end badly. Your 3D printer is a rebellious teenager. You take your eyes off of it for one second and it's snuck out to this cool new nightclub called Layer Shift. Unless you have some kind of automatic failure detection, you're just left crossing your fingers, hoping that everything's gonna turn out okay. Cloud software makes thunderstorms really scary. If internet goes down, so do your files. Customers seem to want exactly what they ordered. Copying orders from your online store onto a spreadsheet and then onto your printers is not just tedious, it's prone to errors. Print farm software shouldn't throttle remote connections, impose file size limits, limit frame rates, or put caps on webcam streaming sessions. It's your farm, so you should be able to have unlimited access to it anytime and anywhere. 3D printed supports are kind of like your boss. The more work you do, the more work you seem to get, which is why I want to find a better way to print overhangs without needing support material. If that sounds interesting to you and you haven't seen my video about ARC overhangs yet, you can check it out and a link will be in the description. All right, so that's a lot of problems, but thankfully they can all be solved using the wonderful technology of computers. Over the next month or so, we'll be releasing some YouTube shorts about how we solve every single one of these problems I just listed. If you're a human from the future, there's probably a button somewhere right here where you can click and it'll take you to the beginning of that playlist. If you relate to any of these problems, let me know down in the comment section and why not drop a like on the video while you're at it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.